In this video, we're going to look at the Rotobrush tool. Now, rotoscoping in After Effects is a really common process that allows us to separate an object from its background. Quite commonly, this might be like a person or a car or something moving, something of an irregular shape. We use this process when we don't have a green screen to help us pull a key to separate the foreground from the background. The really powerful thing about the Rotobrush tool is it doesn't need that background to be a flat, solid colour. It can be the same colour as the subject or a close tone to the subject. It can have lots of visual information. It can be a street scene. It can be any kind of background. As long as there's a defined edge of contrast, we're able to then make a smart selection, modify that selection, and allow the Rotobrush tool to kind of follow that over the footage, creating a really refined selection and mask of our footage. In this example, the footage we're using is all in the same colour spectrum. From the carnation pink background, to the red jersey, to the skin tones, everything more or less is in the red colour spectrum. So we're not able to pull a key here. There isn't any real background information, but there isn't much contrast either. So this poses us a, a specific set of challenges with our roller brush. So if we can create a good key out of this, you will pretty much be able to create a good key out of anything. So let's get started. So I'm starting with a composition with my raw footage. This footage is straight out of the camera and it's a touch dark. So we're going to apply a levels to that just to lift it. Now the levels effect in After Effects works just like the levels does in Photoshop or elsewhere. So I'm just going to Lift that footage a little bit without brightening the dark shadow areas. So that's much better than it was to begin with. So with our footage treated with a little bit of a first pass of a colour correction, we're now ready to look at the Roto Brush tool. Now the Roto Brush tool is up here. And for it to work, we need to be in the isolated layer view. So just looking at this footage, so if I double click on it, it'll open up just that layer. And with the Roto Brush tool selected, it will come to life. If I'm in my composition, I can have the Roto Brush tool selected, but I don't actually have the brush live. I can't draw or paint anywhere that would my mask to be. So I'm going to go back to my isolated layer view. And we have a brush. I basically want to draw or paint within the shape that I want to mask. After Effects will then look 20 frames forward trying to look for things that are the same shape. So it'll look for those edges of contrast and it'll see how they change and it will create a mask that follows that profile. So I'm going to roughly paint thin and it's found the edge quite nicely. If it hasn't included everything, I just paint to bring in those extra parts. If I need to adjust the size of my brush, holding on the command key and dragging left or right for my mouse or control on a PC, while I need to increase or decrease the size of a brush. If something has been included within my selection that I want to omit, I hold down my Alt key and I can paint out sections that I don't want included. So with that done, I can look down here and I have different views. So I can toggle those views so I can see what the mask is. I can see the alpha. So what is white will be solid and kept and what is black is now transparent. I can also move forward the 20 frames and you can see here, this is the miniature work area and you can see it's working through to that point. And this figure doesn't move a great deal. So it's a fairly easy mask for us to make. And you see it's done a really good job of identifying the edge, even though it's all very similar in color tone. So I'll get to the edge where it stops and I'll repeat the process. Track forward, ensuring nothing has been omitted. And you can see I've now cut out our subject. But we'll also notice if we zoom in, the edge of the hair is very crisp and sharp. There's no feather there. Little bits where the hair separates, you can see through to the background. They're not transparent is a very sharp edge selection. And even for a hard edge object like a car or part of a building or architecture of some kind, 
you're still going to want a touch of feather there just to ease the edge off it. And that's where, in certain circumstances, especially when we have hair or softer edged objects, we're going to use what's called the Refine Edge tool. So I've brought my playhead to the start of the clip. And to get my Refine Edge tool, I'm going to hold down my Roto Brush tool until it pops open, and I'm going to select Refine Edge. And this tool works in a similar but slightly different manner. It's essentially the Quick Mask tool in Photoshop. So if you've used that, this will be very familiar. I look anywhere on the edge where there's some areas of transparency and some areas where there's a little bit of opacity, such as the hair here. I'm going to paint over that edge, going inside and outside of my mask, ensuring I get all the detail I need. I get this X-ray view. And what's happening here is, again, where it's white, it's solid, and where it's black, it's transparent. But there's shades of grey now included as well, and that's the edge, wispy parts of the hair that there's a little bit of opacity there, a little bit of colour coming through from behind. That now is transparent. So we can place things behind this layer, and the hair will shine over it. Again, we can change our views. So we see our mask now has all that edge detail around the hair. I will just repeat this process for the entirety of the clip and that gives this beautifully clean detailed masking of the hair. So now we have a look close up we can see individual threads of hair, gaps where it kind of separates out where we can see behind and that kind of opaqueness where there's fine threads and wisps of hair there. All of that detail now remains where before it was just a hard, sharp edge. Now, if we look in the effect controls, we'll see that the roto brush is indeed an effect, and we can fine tune how it's working. We'll notice, for example, that there's a feather on the. We'll notice, for example, that there's a feather on the edge of the sections that are just the roto brush, and likewise, there's a feather and a contrast and a shift on the refine edge as well. So if I increase the feather, for example, it'll make the hair a touch softer on the edge. So I might want to put a slight feather on that. I might want to reduce the feather here. I might want to increase the contrast slightly on the refine edge as well. And that might give me a harder edge and some of the stuff might be occluded. And as I reduce that, more of the softer parts of the hair are included within the selection. Sometimes we might also want to add a little bit of colour adjustment on the edges. For example, if the colour of the hair is being affected by the colour behind, we can tick to decontaminate that edge colour and now there's not a red hint to the edge of the hair there. So we turn that on and off. You see the hair becomes much cleaner, much truer to the colour of the the subject's hair. With our subject now isolated and masked off by using the rotor brush tool, we're now ready to go back to our composition view and finish our comp. Now I want there to be a body of text floating behind our character. So I'm going to take the text tool, drag a text box, type my text, just that and increase its size. I'm going to put that on a lower layer. And with that there, I'm then going to go and take my carnation footage, duplicate that, and drag one of them beneath the rotor brush text. The video that's on the lower layer, I'm going to select it, go to the effect controls, and I'll see that the levels are applied, but also the rotor brush and your fine edge tool is there as an effect. So I'm going to select that and delete and I'll have a full normal video clip and that will give me my background with my text now behind. I'm going to go to that text and I'm going to then keyframe it scale over time. Just a small amount. And now that text is enlarging in size and scale and as it does so we can see the text through the edge of the hair and the hair neatly masked over it. Now the more time we spend with our rotor brush tools 
refining the edges and ensuring only what we need is selected, the better our outcome. It's not something that you can necessarily rush and taking the time, especially in much more complicated movements where characters or objects are more dynamic or there's a bit of motion blur around them, really pays dividends comparing to just trying to do something quickly. So whenever you're using rope brush as an effect, give yourself the time necessary to accomplish it at its best. As always, we can look at ways to elevate and lift this shot. For example, in this composition, the text is a three dimensional layer. There's a point of light illuminating it, which is why we get the kind of shading dropping off towards the sides. The light is placed so it is in line with the highlight of the subject, so the light would be accurate. And I've created a color solid in the background. Now that color solid is also a 3D layer and it's behind the text. And within the material options, I set accept shadows to only. This makes the solid invisible apart from where shadows land in it, thus creating a shadow catcher, thus giving us the shadow falling in the background. So it feels like this text is physically in the space, the same as our subject. And again, these are things that we don't always have to do, but it's always good to look at shots and look at compositions and think about what little 